this is a replica of the in-game Elite Dangerous control panels made by a company from Italy called Flight Sim PM. And today we're going to take a look at it and give it a review. Before we start, I just quickly want to give you a rundown of the affiliation here. I have paid full price for this device myself. I have not received any kind of gifts, money, anything at all from the uh, manufacturer of this. So now we have that out of the way, let's dive into the hardware itself. So as you can see here, just as in Elite Dangerous, it comes as two separate um, panels that match what we have in game. Now the side here kind of has like a carbon fiber look to it. I don't think it's actual carbon fiber. I just think it's a vinyl that they have on there, um, but it's plastic. Same with the other side here, um, white plastic underneath here. And then we have some acrylics where they have laser engraved the, uh, the different um, panels and things into them. And then of course we have physical buttons. The travel on these buttons are quite short, but they do have a, as you can hear, an audible click when you push on them. The same thing here on the opposite side, we have again, a very similar construction, laser engraved panels, and then we have lots of buttons. Again, very short travel on them with the same audible click as you have on the other side. And then you have eight hat switches up here, which are two-way momentary hat switches. So they can go up, they can go down, they will spring back to the center. So up here you have 16 inputs, down here you have six plus four, that's 10. And over here you have an additional six inputs. This gives us 32 inputs on the device in total, which is perfect because you may know that Elite has some issues if you have more than 32 inputs on a single device, then things kind of begin to break a little bit. Therefore, there's no need to do any kind of virtual device splitting or anything like that with Joystick Gremlin. It is really just plug and play. Now, talking about plug and play, on the back of the devices, we have a bunch of cables that comes out here that have been neatly hiding for you here. One of the cables is a very generously length USB cable. Um, I don't know, but this is... It feels like two meters of USB cable. This is a very, very long cable. So this is gonna reach wherever you have it. And then the two devices are connected with a slightly shorter, I would say this is a meter and a half-ish, of a, a, a thick braided cable there. Now this is one of the cable we haven't talked about, and it is this, this is the power supply. If you're just interested in the functionality of the switches, then you can make do just plugging it in as a USB device and you don't need the power supply. So it will work just fine without the power supply. However, if you do want the lights in it to turn on because it does have inbuilt in -built lights, you will need a power supply, which you can buy from them as well. And the power supply very neatly just plugs in to the back of one of them and then we're just gonna find some power for it. And here we have them plugged in, as you can see, with a nice blue light matching the colors in game with the little display up here lighting up in red. There are no options to change the colors. These are the colors you get. You get what's in game and that's it. Talking about the device here, the bottoms here are okay. They're not the best I've ever felt. Same with each one over here. And the same kind of goes with the little hatch switches here. They're very, very small, the hatch switches here. They feel really, really tiny when you are when you're using them. But I guess this is a compromise they had to do in terms of getting this um, to actually fit within the, the size. So I don't know. Another thing I would really like to see on a device like this is, first of all, I'm not sure why we need a separate power supply for lights. I guess we should be able to pull enough power over the USB cable to power the LEDs, but I'm sure there's a reason for it. But I just felt like the power from the USB should be enough to actually run the lights. And another thing is, I would also really like to have seen some kind of mounting options here on the back. These are just blank plates. There are some notches here, but those are for inserts that are actually holding off the PCBs inside. And you have two screws if you want to open up the back so you can go and have a look inside yourself. But there are no mounting options. You have just blank surface here and you can attach like some well, know, sticky tape or whatever, uh, Velcro or whatever, if you want to actually mount these. But since these are really intended, if you want to go full on immersion, then I would really like to see some kind of mounting option because you do, I guess, want to mount these on, the, on your chair. Because let's talk about what this device is and what this device is not. Now, if we compare it to something like this, this is a Verbal Control Panel 1. They are actually not that dissimilar in price. I think the Verbal Control Panel is slightly more expensive than the Elite Control Panel here. But these two devices try to solve two very different problems, though they may seem like they try to do the same thing. This is your Swiss army knife. It's your Leatherman. This is your go anywhere, do anything control panel. So if you want to play a little bit of a lead, you maybe want to play some Star Citizen, maybe you want to fly some flight sims or whatever other simulators you're, you're playing. Maybe you're playing 
uh, train sims or farming sims or whatever, this will work just fine. While there's nothing that technically um, prevents you from using this in other games, I mean, it's just an input device, so nothing prevents you from using the keyboard or the input here for other things. If this is a Switch Army knife, this is more like getting a movie prop replica of like Crocodile Dundee's knife or something like that. If you want to ask which is best, well, that depends. If you want to cosplay as Crocodile Dundee, well, you probably want to get the movie prop. So if you're going full on immersion, you just want an elite cockpit in your home so you can sit and have something else close to what you see in game, then this is the solution for you. If you're looking for something for more general purpose that you can use in other games, that makes more sense in other games, I would say, then something like a verbal control panel is a much better option. So as you can see, it really depends what it is you're looking for. And I can definitely see people preferring this over the other or the other way around. And another situation where I could see panels like these being more useful than a box like this is if you're playing in VR. Because obviously in VR, you're not going to be able to see these panels and that would mean that you often have to sit like feel your way around so you can find the actual switches to press them. Whereas if you can get these mounted in the correct position so that these matches the position they are in game, well, if you're playing in VR, it is a lot easier to locate these switches, even though you can't see your hands, you still have a feeling of the distance and where it kind of is in relation to you. And this is why we need these with a mounting option so that they can get chair mounted and you can get these um, working even in, uh, in, in VR. Now, I did say earlier that they were not too dissimilar price wise. It is technically true as they have a listed price, but they are actually not up for sale. They are sold out at the moment and I did talk to the developers about whether they were planning to get them back in stock at some point. And what they say was that they are currently looking to redesign these a little bit and then maybe come with a, a, a new version of them later down the road. So they are not up for sale at the moment, unfortunately. And I don't know when they are going to be up for sale either. Now, the fact that you can't buy these and that there's no time scale for when they're going to be back in stock probably makes this next segment a little bit more interesting because you can actually get your hands on this device, this physical device. I will ship that to you. I will be giving this away as part of my 100,000 subscriber celebration. That means when my channel reaches 100,000 subscribers, I'm going to have a couple of weeks where I'm going to be celebrating it and that's going to be giveaways. This is going to be part of it. There's going to be more, hopefully, but this is going to be one of the things you're going to be able to win. So if you want to have a chance to get this in your home and play with it in Elite Dangerous, then go down and hit the subscribe button and help me get towards those 100,000 subscribers. But I would love to hear what you think about this yourself. Is this something you'd be interested in? Would you be interested in seeing a follow-up review when a potential new iteration of this device comes out down the road? Do let me know in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give a like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. I'll see you guys in space.